out here in Angeles Crest in the hills above Los Angeles testing out two frame-mounted fairing American touring bikes. We have the Harley-Davidson Road Glide Special. This bike is tried and true. It's got the iconic shark nose fairing. We know it, we love it, but there's a new challenger at the table, quite literally the Indian Challenger with the all new liquid cooled Power Plus 108. This is a classic bagger silhouette, but with that motor, it's doing something a little bit different. So we're out to put these bikes through a bunch of different scenarios and see how they stack up against each other. We are now back in the studio with Michael Gilbert, our road test editor, and the Harley Davidson Road Glide and Indian Challenger Limited. You'll notice this isn't the dark horse that we were out road testing for the last few days. Uh, we had some electrical issues which needed that bike to be replaced. We'll get more into that and the reasoning there later. Just know that there are a couple differences like price point and weight in this bike compared to the one that we were actually testing. So uh, now let's get back into these bikes, similarities and differences, and uh, how they compare. And obviously, everyone wants to talk about the Indian Challenger's Power Plus 108 liquid-cooled engine. Yeah, I mean, that's the news. This bike has a lot of similarities between the Chieftain line, uh, subframe, seat, saddlebags, but that engine is all new. And being an American touring bike with a liquid-cooled V-twin, it's sort of a new thing for baggers, so it's really exciting. Right, and we put both of these on the Cycle World Dyno, and the numbers were they were noticeably yeah, different. They so were quite different. The, uh, the Road Glide here did 76 horsepower at about 4,800 RPM and 108 pound feet of torque at about 2,600 RPM, whereas the new Indian Challenger was 103 horsepower at about 5,500 RPM and a whole 113 pound feet of torque at 3,300 RPM. Right, so with the Challenger, you're looking at more torque than the American Torque Monster, right. and comparable horsepower to a 2019 Goldwing. Right. So you're looking at all that red light go, Yep. and the passing power and that high end of a metric tour. 100%, and you feel that on the road. On the Indian, I feel like you can really, you know, ride the upper upper range of the RPMs and be able to utilize it, like you say, the passing power and, and be able to just get down the road. Whereas on the Road Glide here, I feel like I'm kind of running into the red line so quickly. Yeah, after switching from this bike to that one, that's one thing I really noticed is I would really find myself riding out that red line, yep. expecting the power to keep climbing, but it would plateau. Right. You know, it probably has to do with the Indians, what feels like taller gearing. I felt like gear choice on the Indian is so much more crucial than it is on the Road Glide. I feel like on the Road Glide, you can get away with lugging it through corners or off of stoplights, whereas on the Indian, you know, you still can, but you have to maybe work the clutch a little bit. So with American Touring Bikes, the style, the soul, the feel of the bike is a huge part of the buying decision. And that has to be the reason why Harley Davidson is still rubber mounting their engine. I, I'm sure you're exactly right. You, the Harley really speaks to you when you're sitting at stoplights or out on the road. You feel the vibrations of the V-twin through the handlebar, through the floorboards, through the seat, and it, you know, it just, it's there, it speaks to you. Yeah, it's, the, the vibrations are really emotionally evocative and you just don't get that with the frame mounted engine on the Challenger. Right. I don't get a lot of vibration. You don't even really feel the engine at the mm -hmm. bars until about 2000 RPM. And again, that smooths out as you and get higher. And then it just smooths out. Right. That's a big part of American touring for me, something I've come to love from riding Harleys for so long. And uh, while the Indian still sounds great, doesn't have that feel and, uh, and I do sort of miss the connection there that I get with the Harley. Exactly. Cool, well uh, moving on from the engine, let's talk a little bit about the suspension. We have inverted forks with cartridge in the front mm -hmm. and then we have a Fox monoshock rear, uh, hydraulically adjustable preload through a little wrench unit on the side. Right. And then over here we have Showa dual bending valve suspension in the front. Then we have an emulsion shock in the rear that's preload adjustable on one of the two units back right. there. Quite a big difference. It's a huge Mechanically, difference. and you feel that difference on the road. The Indian small bunk compliance, it's not even a competition to the road glide. I feel like it just glides over the, over the road and the potholes and all the imperfections um, and still has a lot of support for big hits. Yeah. Whereas the road glide, it's a big motorcycle and you feel that packing over the top of bumps. Honestly, I think it's just apparent that with the internal floating piston of the Fox rear shock and the inverted forks here, the suspension components just work better. They carry the Indian much, much better than the Road Glide. Yeah. yeah. And then stopping these big bikes, uh, they both have 
dual front disc. You'll see over here you have dual 300 millimeter discs with uh, Harley branded, but Brembo manufactured four piston calipers. Mm -hmm. And then four piston caliper in the rear with the 300 millimeter disc on this as well. Right. On the Indian, you have 320 millimeter Brembo discs, Brembo branded four pot calipers, and then a two piston caliper in the rear on a 300 millimeter right. disc. Personally, I feel like performance on road feels very comparable but I think that the feel through the Indian's front brake lever, right. especially, uh, I'm a big front brake lever user, as you know, I like testing the super bikes and everything else, yep. um, but I feel like I have so much more feel and it's something that I'm, I'm comfortable with, whereas on the road glide, it feels like I'm grabbing a brick. Like I don't know how much lever I'm pulling on and how much more there is to use, the Indian, I have a lot of confidence. With. Sure, I feel like the range where the brake is applying and you can actually feel it is much greater here. Yep. Whereas on the road glide, it is a little bit more of just a blind squeeze. You're right. sort of just squeezing and basing it more off of how much the bike is stopping rather than lever feedback. Right, exactly. So, and both of these have ABS. Right, and uh, ABS is not switchable. It is on all yep. the time. I was unimpeded by the ABS on either bike. You know, to be honest, yeah, I, I didn't really notice it, if I'm being completely yeah. honest. I had one little minor uh, scare, I guess you could say, on the freeway, and I felt the, the ABS kick in on, on the road glide, but no complaints about it. So now moving on to the electronics package that these bikes both have. Um, the Harley, new this year for the CVO line and live wire is the RDRS, Reflex Defensive Rider System, which is available as an accessory for touring models like this for an extra $9.95. The bike we were testing does have this system, which is uh, corner enhanced link braking, cornering ABS and traction control, tire pressure monitoring, uh, front brake hill hold, and a couple other little details. Um, whereas the Indian has Basically, all of these features come standard. Standard. It has quartering ABS, quartering traction control, all included in that price. But that being said, this traction control it intrudes a lot. Gets you. It really does. Even uh, like I feel like if I make a right-hand turn at a stoplight and then get the bike straight up and down and hammer the throttle, it still it still pulls all the power back, and I feel like I'm going nowhere. Right. There were m multiple times in the day where I went to drop the clutch, and I'm leaning forward expecting it to, you know, mm -hmm. catch the G's of acceleration, and it just cuts that throttle back right. so much that it throws me forward. And right, you know, there, in, there's in expectation. some refinement that could be made. Right, and it did bug me. Uh, I mean, for inexperienced riders, it is undoubtedly going to make them feel a little bit safer right. having that traction control and having that little bit of a security blanket but for more experienced riders i i can't imagine that it won't feel like an impeding force right. like something it, that's really cutting them back it's a safety net it's pulling you back and you're not right. able to exploit what the motorcycle has to offer right but luckily right. uh for those of us that don't like the traction control and don't want to use it it is three clicks on that screen to turn it off. You can turn it off while you're moving and it resets just as soon as the throttle reaches back right. at zero. So one of the uh, one of the most fun parts of the day out testing was the sound off. That, that's right. Yeah, you were playing your bluegrass old man music over there. And you know, I had the young hip rap music. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this, this has a 100 watt stereo system. It's got big bass speakers and little tweeters. The audio is loud and clear. It, Clear describes it, yeah. yeah. I feel like the Road Glide here, it gets just as loud, I'll have to say, but it definitely doesn't have that clear pitch that the Indian does. Yeah, it was a little bit muddier sounding. And um, again, talking about those luxury features, those premium features, one of the nicest things for me as far as just comforts with the Challenger is that electronically adjustable windshield. Right. It's just two clicks and it goes all the way up. You're right. In this nice little pocket mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, that's that's not an option there. Yeah. And not to mention, we rode home the other night with dark visors. So I, I raised the windscreen up and lifted my visor and I could see just fine with hardly any wind yeah. getting in my eyes. And let's, uh, let's get a little bit more into that ride home. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> so when testing the Challenger out in the field, uh, first off, let's mention they're about a month away from being sold in dealerships, so this is a pre-production model. But during testing, I noticed the key low gas um, 
many different alerts. All sorts of alert up. lights yep. started coming up, and it was not affecting the ride of the bike. But on the dash, I saw all these lights start to pop up. Sort of disregarded it. Continued our testing throughout the day. Um, again, being a pre-production model, don't put too much. We didn't put too much weight on this emphasis, during the yeah. testing. Yeah. Um, and then coming home, I got a workout in. Yeah, I, I had to push the big Indian Challenger you know, maybe about a quarter of a mile back to the office. It just, it happened to just shut down on me. And uh, I think that you talked to Indian and you guys figured out the issue with the particular bike we were riding. Yeah, exactly. So after talking to Indian and getting to the bottom of it, they, uh, they went through the wiring that found in the loom underneath the seat, there was a, a zip tie that had worn through and caused a couple of wires to cross, right. which caused that connection. Yep. Um, basically, the wiring routes aren't finalized in these pre-production bikes. So we've made this problem clear to Indian, and they claim that they will have it fixed for production models. Yep. Because we did have to give back the other Challenger at the end of that day of testing, we were unable to get our weight measurements on it. So we did get weight measurements on this Limited. The Dark Horse is supposed to weigh 831. That's their claimed wet weight, whereas the claimed wet weight for the Limited is 840. I thought it was really interesting that actual weight was actually 15 pounds heavier at 855. Whereas Harley Davidson claimed the Road Glide would weigh 855, and we saw an actual weight of 849. Right. That's correct, it's pretty dead on. And to be honest though, the Indian, I felt like it was a little bit lighter on the road, and maybe that's the chassis geometry. And um, like I said, I'm kind of a smaller guy, and that, it, the shape of the seat allows me to kind of maneuver a little bit more than maybe the Road Glide does. I just felt a little bit more confident, and it felt a little bit lighter weight or lighter feeling on the road. Yeah, I mean, I I think that most of that's probably attributed to the power um, and, and the power there. When I was on them, I really felt that the weights were similar. I would have, I would have guessed that the weights were similar. Yep. Um, but ergonomics, I felt a little bit more cramped up on the Road Glide than I did on the Challenger. I felt a little bit more stretched out on the Challenger. I don't say I felt cramped up. I think it felt a little bit right because I'm probably 10 inches shorter than you. But on the Indian, for sure, I definitely felt stretched out. Like I said, the seat, a little bit narrower. I felt more comfortable at stoplights and yep. slow movements. Um, but no, you're exactly right. When you're looking at the prices on these bikes, the Indian Challenger will run you $27,500 for the Dark Horse and $27,999 for the Limited. The Road Glide will run you $27,299, but again, we have the Reflex Defensive Rider System on this, which is an added $1,000. So pricing is really comparable. I'd say that from brakes, suspension, chassis, engine, it's a pretty clear sweep on the Indian though. Yeah, no, I totally agree. The Indian, uh, just the overall ride comfort, especially the small bump compliance has really gotten me. The nimble handling, like I said, it just, it, it suits me, the brakes, a little bit more feel from the front brake lever, and of course the engine, being able to rev that thing out and you know just enjoy what the Indian Power Plus 108 has to offer. Now, the Harley Davidson, it is the iconic bagger, and you feel that, it's a lot of fun to ride, but I'm gonna have to give my $27,500 to Indian, and that's my decision. So we have two quintessential American baggers. They have that silhouette that we know and love, but with the liquid cooled motor here, it's doing something new on that platform. You get the torque of an American tourer, but the high revving horsepower of metric touring bikes that we love. So it really is the best of both worlds. And I think made clear by the fact that we were arguing over who got to ride the Challenger home at the end of the day, uh, this is the winner of our frame mounted fairing bagger shootout. I concur. <laughs> right on. So. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, like, follow, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.